Something I see often when I'm critiquing students' paintings is that they use a lot of texture all over their painting, from the foreground, the middle ground, through to the background. So today what we're gonna talk about is how to use texture in a strategic way to lead the viewer's eye around the scene and create a feeling of depth in your painting. You're gonna wanna hone in on this message today, maybe take a few notes as we dive in and learn how to use texture in our watercolor paintings. We create texture in different ways when we paint. We have to consider the type of paper we're using. Some paper like hot press is more smooth and so there's less texture on the surface. Cold press and rough have more texture. That surface of your paper is an element in your painting that you need to consider. How you apply the paint on the paper creates a different type of texture. And also watercolor timing is another element. When you paint wet into wet, you're not creating a lot of texture. You're creating smooth transitions between colors. But when you're using dry brush and using less water in your mixture, that's when you really get these nice broken marks. When we are painting, we wanna use texture strategically. Where there is texture in your painting, it tends to draw the viewer's eye. It can lead the viewer's eye around the scene. It can highlight areas of interest and also one of the most important things that texture does is it brings an area forward. One of the most beautiful parts about watercolor painting is a contrast between the soft edges and the really hard edges. Softer edges feel further away in your painting. Harder edges feel closer up in your painting. So now that we know what texture is and, and some ways that we create it, I wanna take a look at this painting by Andy Evenson. If you aren't familiar with his work, he's a fantastic artist and teacher. He's one of my favorite painters. I've been fortunate to, to study and learn from him along the way. And I was particularly impressed with this painting here. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. What caught my eye about this scene right away was this texture in the foreground. Subjects like this are deceptively difficult. It's really hard to paint this scene from light to dark. All of these this bit of texture here is negative painting. And these are negative shapes. And what that means is he's painting around these highlights to preserve them. So he has to think about the perspective of these lines, the light color of these lines he has to leave behind. And the way that he's able to do that and create this beautiful feeling of texture and interest that leads us right into the painting, I think is amazing. I want you to note how prominent the texture is here in the foreground and how as it leads us into the scene, it becomes less pronounced. And look over in this area of the painting. Notice how there's not much texture further into his scene. When we are painting scenes like this, you can apply this to street scenes or any other landscape scene. The further into your scene that you get, you want less of this texture. And when he gets to the middle ground, there's a bit more texture. And then when he gets to the foreground, that's when you see a lot of texture. And let's talk about the foreground for a minute. This is such a wonderful balance of information without overworking. It's very easy when you're painting the foreground to add too much information and then that takes over the painting. Your eye gets stuck right here. So if he had used the same amount of contrast that he used on these cows all over the place, in this foreground, your eye would get stuck right here. Then the foreground is competing with the rest of the painting. So finding that balance is so important. Let's talk through how he painted this scene. When he started up here, he's painting the sky. And then you'll notice these soft edges of color. He's dropping that in when his sky is still wet. Then he's coming down to where these buildings are and dropping in the lightest colors on those buildings. Then when he gets down, to where the ground starts, he's dropping in this tan color back here, this earth tone, this lighter bit of green. One thing that I like that he's doing here is that he's mixing these colors wet into wet on the paper. So a more vibrant green, a more cool green, vibrant colors on the roof, other colors, you can see these soft transitions. So he's not just picking one color of green and covering all the green parts of the painting. He's adding in these nice variations in color that are blending with each other on the wet paper. Then when he gets down here, he has to think about this light color that he's gonna leave behind on his next wash. So that's where he's leaving this nice light tan color all the way up to here to the foreground. Then he transitions into some of this green. He drops in some of the light colors on these cows, some of the light colors 
down here, all in one fluid wet into wet wash. Then he's letting his paper dry. After that, he's gonna come back in and he's gonna paint a large connected shape of the scene, a large connected middle value shape. And that includes this line of dirt here where the ground meets the sky into these trees. This is one big shape here into these trees here, painting around some of the highlights into these trees here and then down here into some of the texture. All of this is done at one time. See, there's little connections here. The color of this comes up to meet the grass and all of that comes here. So after he gets that big, large connected shape, then he comes in and he adds in the darks and the details that separate the scene. He's adding in a few darks to define this tree, the shadow of the tree, which is a little darker, these few little bits of lines that suggest a fence line here, and then he's painting the shapes of the cows, which are a great area of interest, nice contrast versus the light green of the grass. A few little darks to define the buildings and the sheds and the things here in the distance. A couple little darks over here to bring a little more interest into the foreground and then that's the painting. But what I love here is such a great balance of texture. More texture here, a little less in the middle ground, and then in the background, less texture on the grass here. He does have some texture up here in the trees to give them a little bit of definition, but this beautiful way that he handled this here really gives us that sense of order that the painting needs. So the next time you are painting, think about texture as a tool. How do you lead the viewer's eye through the scene? What area of your painting needs the most interest? When you start to think this way and use texture to create depth in your scene, to guide the viewer's eye around the painting, your work is gonna take a big step forward. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.